It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Carbon Express. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Hunting Sense. Killer Food Plots. Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants. Cabela's. Spot Shooters. Limb Walker Game Calls. Twisted Minds Bowstrings. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Antler Action. And Family Traditions Tree Stand. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal. Everybody. Your host, Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin as Danny is slurping his coffee. <sighs> Tastes pretty good. Hunter's Blend. Hunter's Blend, that's right. This I'm going on my second pot tonight. Is this, uh, is this the regular blend or the dark roast? This is a dark roast, oh. and I'm fired up, man. I, I am jittery. I'm like jittering Joe, man. Oh, great. Hey, Tammy Delk says, it's Tammy Delk says, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody. Right. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Jason Fister tuning in. Hey, Jason, what's going on? Jared Carpenter's uh, a, a man from Ohio. Too. We're going to talk a little bit about Ohio. We actually. are going to. Actually, two bucks from Ohio. Yeah. Before we get started, as we always say, Hunter's Blend Coffee, uh, one of our supporters here at the Upmarch Journal, if uh, you, you go over and order off of their webpage, at huntersblend.com, you can actually use the UNJ promo code, and you can save 10% on your order. Absolutely. So. Go out there, get some coffee delivered right to your doorstep. Yep. They got some cool new cups and all kinds of good stuff over sure, besides tasting. coffee. Right, exactly. They just don't have coffee. Can you tell I'm fired up tonight? Yeah, I can tell. That's good. Too much coffee. Were you fired up when you were at the gym? Yes. Good. Yeah, I went yesterday. Uh, you want to start there? We can start there. All right, yeah, we uh, actually, Danny and I, we, we've talked about this a little bit. Jared Carpenter, Merry Christmas. Ronald Moses, Merry yeah. Christmas. Look, Merry Christmases are just all over the place. Lying Yeah. Travis Minton, hey. Bob and Cindy. Tune in. Merry Christmas. All right. Got to like it, guys. You know, it's one of those things, um, as we get into the Christmas season, yeah. well, we're still going to hit the gym. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I had to work today. You went this morning. I did go this morning. I went last night. Um I took a quick trip into town. I had to get some light bulbs. We had a couple burned out bulbs here. So I was right near right the gym. There. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go do some cardio tonight. So I, I had my gear with me and I went in the gym and actually it was pretty dead in there. And uh, I spent an hour and 35 minutes on the bike. Excellent. Good job. How's your buttocks? Sore. <laughs> yeah. Chatting when you get for an hour. Right. Uh, hour and a half. Hour and 35, to be exact. That's what happens. 26 miles on the bike, which equates to, on my bike, uh, about 16 and a quarter miles. That's what I figured. Gotcha. So. Jared Carpenter. Yes, we are based in Michigan. We are just out of, south of Flint, Michigan. Yeah, where are you from, uh, Jared? Throw in there yeah, where you're where from. where are you checking in from? So. But, yeah, so you, you did an hour on the bike. Uh yep. Yeah, that's eating form to you really nicely. Right. And well, you and I, we did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we kind of switched it up a little bit. And we did uh, our regular three workouts and moved the cardio to Thursday. Which would have actually moved it to Friday because Thursday we went over to uh, Beyond the Years. Beyond the Years, yep. They had a special event over there, which we can talk about a little bit in a minute. But uh, we, so we didn't do anything Thursday. That's right. So Friday we go, you went. And then I went with my wife. Yes, I went Friday morning, uh, got up, went over there. And you know what? It was, uh, when did I get over there? About noon, probably in the 11 o'clock hour. Mm -hmm. It was pretty busy. Uh, when we went, it wasn't too bad Friday evening. Uh, so I did some cardio that day. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I went back again yesterday and hit it again. And I, I don't know. Have you, you ever run on a regular basis? Run or run? Yeah, like, you know, doing, like, you know, outdoor running. Not, well, long time ago, but n now that I've been back in the gym. Have you ever it, got the runner's high? Yes, you get it after I so see, many miles when you hit the wall. Yes. <laughs> well, that's kind of the way I was yesterday. Okay. I got into about that hour and five to hour and ten range, and I just kept pushing, and all of a sudden, it's just like a switch went off, and really, I'm, they were get they're going to close within that hour yeah. frame that I was there, and I'm like, 
Yeah, I think hour and a half is enough. But I, I could have went. I could have went more. I mean, oh, it, it was. Okay. I hit that that spot, and I've only hit that one other time when I was riding my regular bike. But uh, we're getting we're getting in shape for the outdoors. That's, that's right. That's, the, that's what we're trying. What we're talking about. and What we're trying to do. So. Getting in shape for the outdoors. Jared Carpenter's checking in from Claire, Michigan. Claire. Today. All right. Yeah. I used to hunt up that way a while back a few years back yeah but we are getting in shape um you're going to be a great ice tester you're going to be heading out first with all the gear on not testing the ice you are i'm going to throw you on the ice you can pick me up i have seen some ice too you know what i've kind of seen some ice um people are fishing already uh you told me you saw them on bevan's lake over in holly i hope uh i don't know if they are now but right i noticed the um the mill pond over there Mm -hmm. um was a like had a thin crust. The ducks were on the edge where the mm-hmm. open water was, so hopefully, um, just be careful if they're going out there. <laughs> Ron Moses, get that pulling shanty with no machine in the heavy snow. That there you go. That's what that's what we're building up for, man. That's right. You know, we're gonna make Danny pull it. You know, we're gonna be we're gonna be just like him pulling that semi. Right on. Absolutely. Hey, Matt Howard's joining, and you know, I think we're gonna have a lot of guys and gals in the the cabin with us tonight because. Christmas is two days away. It's the weekend. Everybody's off work, and they want to see you. Well, they want to. They also because they're they're probably tired from shopping. They finished up their shopping today because, mm-hmm. unless you got last minute things you need to do tomorrow. Right. You know, speaking of ice fishing, uh, let's get this out of the way real quick. Probably can't see this too well, but eh, it's not too bad there. Let me see. Let me drop this name banner here so everybody can hopefully see this. We'll do that. Ron Moses says they picked someone up on Pontiac Lake today. Oh, jeez. Stay off the ice until it gets good. BB's Bait, Pike Masters Classic. This is over at Spot Shooter Archery in Holly, uh, Jim Beasley's shop over yes. there that we, we frequent quite often. Uh, he's got a, a bait and tackle shop in there, and they're holding their Pike Master Classic. Uh, this contest is from first ice until March 1st. And it's going to cost you a $15 entry fee unless you go in before January. If you get there before January and get into in this tournament, it's $10. Okay, so $10 before January 1st, 15 after. Yep. It's good for any pike in, in Michigan. The, in the state of Michigan. Yep, caught in Michigan waters. Yep, you just got to go in, register, and get the rest of the rules on how you, if you catch one, how you yep. turn it in. And uh, cash prize to uh, the winner, 50% of the entry money, entry fee money, uh, goes to the winner. The other 50% goes to the Holly VFW, uh, which is a pretty cool organization and giving back to our veterans. Okay. So, uh, and the winner is the longest pike. It's not on weight, it's on length. So, And like, like you said, stop by there, check in, register, get all the regular regulations and rules that he has yep. for the contest. So, uh, it looks like Ron Moses and Tammy Delk are... Oh, Ron Moses finished shopping not, and Tammy Delk is heading out shortly to finish shopping. I thought she was going to say to start. <laughs> I hope finish. How about you? Are you done shopping? I'm done. Done. That's good. Finished up. I think... Eyes and N were yesterday. I think I, I, I think got to run done. out one more time. Yeah, I think we're done. As far as I know, we're done. But, yeah, so... um. So we're ready for Christmas, mm-hmm. uh, but in the news, there's been some stories these last couple of weeks that have been flying around about big bucks being shot, mm-hmm. poached. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so take your pick where you want to start. You know, we've talked a little bit about deer hunting. Well, some nice bucks out on the out on the on, on the areas. I would rather start with the worst news and finish. Oh, start with the bad news first. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, let me put the picture up here. This is an Ohio buck. And this buck was poached, and we got a little bit of the story here, so let me find the, uh, this is a 26-point Coshocton County, Ohio buck that was poached. And in a nutshell, this thing was uh, a 26-point buck, and it was shot uh, November 7th by a guy named Junior Troyer, a local Amish man, and it scored... 229 inch, 229 inches was the score of this buck. And long story, it's kind of it's a it's a great little story. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Because, like, like it, that wasn't the person that was actually after it. Another person was after it. He's, I think a lot of people were after this Well, book. he was starting to get trail camera photos of it, right? Right. And like it says in the story, when somebody gets the buck you're kind of after, you kind of want to know the details. Right. So, so the story goes, he, he's trying to get details out of the taxidermist, and it was kind of really evading all the questions and, you know, w- you know, can I see it? Can I look at it? Can I touch it? Right? You right. Know, he's only seen photos of this thing. But... Uh, you know, it's just one of those things that it's one. Of, it, it's it's disheartening. It is. It is. Uh, you know what? Uh, hang on one second. While yep. You, 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 you I'll, inter- I'll entertain the people. Uh, I've got Jim a re- Beasley is watching. Jim, what's happening? Denny Steiner from I, Illinois. I have got a record issue going. Yeah, on. Yeah, you this. do. So finish. Find out where we're at, and we'll pick it up where where we have to. Right. It'll just be like repeat version for the people on Facebook. Nine six A okay. <laughs> Ron Moses, sweet baby Jesus. Yeah, yeah <laughs> no the, doubt about it. it. It's it's a tr- it's a tremendous buck, you know. And like you said, the guy this this guy uh, that was had it on trail cam, uh, Tory Hard Hardesty, had been hunting this deer for uh, several years. And yeah, he, and he yeah. had a lot of information on it. And he had a little group of friends that were that knew about this buck. It wasn't really wide known this buck, and so. They were kind of like, all right, let's. And then they heard that somebody got it, and he's, he was just naturally asking questions. Yeah, well, so they find and, out the taxidermist that it's at, this guy that had been hunting this buck. And the tax, like you said, the taxidermist was evading letting him see it. You know, he was worried about somebody stealing it, he said. Yes, at first it was, I didn't want you to steal the antlers. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the next time was, I got to take my kids to the movies. Mm-hmm. And then the third time he was just, no answer. Yeah, no answer. So kind of, kind of. Hmm. Put the old little question mark in the above the head and said, "What's going on?" So what this guy did, uh, seems how he knew the buck pretty well and had been hunting it. He actually called uh, the Ohio DNR and got them involved in this, and they went over and took a look at the buck. Right. And, and you know, they did some research on this and found out uh, that it wasn't actually registered in this county. Then they started looking in the adjoining county. Wasn't uh, registered there. Tuscarawas County. I can't pronounce it, but that's the count, the next county over. Uh, but they didn't find that buck had been checked in there because Ohio has a mandatory deer check. Yeah. And one, then. One buck rule, too, right? Yeah. Then uh, the game warden checked Holmes County, and sure enough, 26 pointer had been checked in. Uh, he said, realizing the buck could not have been shot in Holmes County, the game warden paid uh, Mr. Troyer a visit, and this person act- uh, totally denied any wrongdoing, but the game warden wasn't you, buying it. You know, when you see a buck like you, the one you got up there on the picture, that, uh, can you imagine seeing that on your uh, camera? I'd have a heart attack. I'd have a, I'd have a stinking heart attack if I seen that thing come flying in. I mean, it's it's just incredible. Right, it is. And, and then, you know, upon further investigation, pressing him for more information, uh, the story is kind of actually it got even worse. It did because the guy who um, went in and you, you know it, it got even worse because this guy even the the gentleman who was after the buck says that he's had like seven hundred dollars in trail cameras stolen off this property this right. year alone. Right. So not only did he not get a chance at the deer, he's losing cameras. But the guy who shot the buck, after being questioned several times, said he admitted to shooting a 130-inch eight-pointer the morning of the 7th. He then went out to hunt that evening. But wait a minute. Ohio is a one-buck state, right? Uh, he, he went out okay. hunting again, and he had, uh, this buck was nicknamed Hayrake. He had Hayrake walk by him, and he let greed set in on him, and he shot the buck. He decapitated both bucks, taking the body of the eight-pointer and the head of the 26-pointer as one buck and tagged it. The next morning, he returned and took the headless body of the 26-pointer and checked it in as a doe. In the meantime, he took the head of the 8-pointer and threw it in the ditch, which the law enforcement uh, officer eventually recovered. And uh, I, have, I have a really goofy <laughs> question. Okay. But how do you take a body of a buck and claim it as a doe? I imagine it was already field dressed. I mean, and cut the okay, genitals okay. off, you know. Really? You're not supposed to do that? No. Well, I don't know. I don't know what Ohio law is. Right? So... so. But anyways, it, it's a, it's a it's a sad thing. It's just, you know, this gorgeous, like it says in the article, it's a shame that this buck is going to adorn the office of the Ohio DNR. DNR. 
Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not in somebody's living room. Not in, it's, it's just, it's not going to happen. And they said that they aged it and it was only four and a half year old. That was a four and a half year old buck. That was four and a half years old. Four and a half year old buck. <sighs> and they said uh, the gentleman who had had so many trail cam photos of this buck over several years, plus the fact he had some cameras stolen and all that, he said he uh, had so much information on this buck and his neighbors that they had seen it on camera that the thing that made this deer so hard to hunt was the fact that it couldn't be patterned because it had no real true core area. That was one of the things that I took away from reading this article mm-hmm. was it, that was, you know, you try to pattern the deer, but they couldn't. On it. They couldn't find a core area. They couldn't find a pattern. It, it was just like almost like a ghostly moving deer. Right. Right. You know, it didn't stay in one spot and it didn't have a core area to have one spot, mm-hmm. but is like. And also the guy that uh, nicknamed this buck that was doing the investigation on his part to try to find out who killed it said that he actually had the buck at 40 yards a few days earlier on October 25th, and he said he needed to take three more steps to clear some brush for a clean shot. And uh, the deer hit the trail where he had walked in and just turned and walked away. So Sn- Sniffed him out. Yep. I mean, that that buck, I mean, if I had something like that walk in front of me, I, I just, I don't know what I'd do, man. I, I'd Well, as Denny Steiner puts it, that's some kind of special kind of stupid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you're right, Bradley. Uh, very sad. Very sad indeed. But I mean, I mean, look at the body on that thing. It's just it's and for huge. a four and a half year old deer. Could you imagine putting another year on that? Another two years? Yeah, right. Before the a decline starts to set in on the on the body of a deer. Simply incredible. It, it is, is incredible. It just you know, and to get a a kind of a broadside view of it to, is is actually pretty amazing because mm-hmm. some of these bucks you might just catch like a little bit or a like a further away pitcher right. or or half of a rack or something like that. But this is like, hey, look at me. Yeah, it's like you knew where the camera was. I just yeah. walked up and looked, hey, take hey, a look at this. Here, I'll turn to my good side because this is the only thing you're going to see. Now, okay, getting back to, to the guy who was hunting this thing the right way, if you had this on your trail camera, how many people would you let know about this buck? If I had that, uh, it would be... Um, it would be very limited to the amount. It, you know, it depends on the situation. Like, if you're hunting public land, <laughs> yeah, I'd be worried about that. <laughs> right. Because you'll have people following you to and from your home to your local hunting spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, private land, uh, where I'm at, I know most of the people that I'm going to show aren't going to show up there. Right. You know, so I would have no problems doing that, but I'd be I'd be, be definitely uh, public land. Yeah, yeah. So you wouldn't bring a trail cam photo in and tell her, uh, bring it on the show here and tell everybody what you're hunting, show them right. Right, exactly, <laughs> and, and, and kind of give them a, a map and here, you right, know, right. draw draw the outline. But uh, yeah, I man, that it's it's sad, but man, what a majestic animal just to be caught. But on you, camera. He already shot a hundred thirty inch eight point, and and then you just kind of discard the head. You know, and try to try to fudge the system uh, to turn this thing in. I, I, I just, I don't know. I don't get it. Some people just don't play by the rules. Yep, it's it's, it's plain and simple. I, I don't even know. I, I, I have a hard time understanding even at that point checking it in, right? I know you have to do it by law in Ohio, mm-hmm. so that's why he did it. But was he looking for the, the heroism afterwards? Because mm-hmm. eventually something's going to... Well, didn't the story say that they didn't want the the guy didn't well, he, he didn't he the taxidermist told the guy looking for the information on it he said that the the gentleman who shot didn't want it scored didn't want any publicity right it was just not and the guy's like what mm-hmm. you know a buck like this yeah like this isn't a lifetime buck no not at all right what do you say it scored two hundred twenty nine two twenty nine I mean that's yeah, you know that's going on the cover of a magazine somewhere. And you're right. If you'd have taken it legally. And you're right, Jared. When it gets to the greedy point, they don't they don't care. It, it's, but I don't. I don't know. It's 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 one of those things that there's going to be so much out there about this buck. It's not like I don't know. I just I have a hard time that that would ever if he if he if he didn't get caught, would he ever get caught? Right. I don't know. You know, we'll never know, but it's going to be in the Ohio DNR office somewhere. You know, getting back to the guy who had the truck cam photo of it and, and was doing the digging on it, have you ever had a buck that just drove you nuts that you were hunting, that you knew was there and knew it was in the area that you stayed after? Have you ever had that happen? And not, not per se. In an, in an, it, it, I, I, 
it's like we've seen them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, we're going to keep hunting this area. And we've never seen them after that. We see them at a distance, like through the woods. We, we have had that happen. So we're like, okay, mm-hmm. he's he, there's a buck here. Right. So, But nothing, not since we started putting out the trail cameras all the time and using them more. Okay. Now that, I tell you what, that adds to it. Um, you just, you get a picture on camera and it's like, okay. Where's this buck at? What mm-hmm. area? And then you start looking for him on different cameras. And it's like, okay, he's not showing up here. He's not showing up here. We'll stick to this area. The closest I've come to that is the one I was hunting three years ago. Yep. Night, night train. Yep. You know, uh, I got that buck twice on camera, no, three times on camera. And I actually laid eyes on him at about 100 yards and watched him feed. I was during bow season and watched him feed for mm, half hour at least. And, yeah, that that buck kind of drove me nuts that year. The one buck that really happened to us on, now that I it jogged my memory, is we were out kind of in the in the back of the property where we a lot we don't go to a lot. But we were just kind of out frogging around, and we put a camera up, and we left, and we came back the day later. And this big, big nine point was there less than an hour after we set the camera. Okay. So it was like, all right. And I knew where I was hunting, but we never seen hide nor hair of them after that. And it was just like... They just kind of disappear. Yeah, they do, and that's and that's one of the things that uh, makes hunting fun. Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, that's the bad news tonight. We got uh, we got two other really good stories here of bucks that are actually bigger than that one. Uh, maybe not total total score wise. One was wider and taller, uh, but the other one definitely had more points. So I tell you what, let's uh, take our first break. We'll step outside. When we come back, we will uh, we'll jump on the next one here. And uh, once again, we'll be down in Ohio with this next story. So we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back. Back to the second segment of the show. And uh, we're talking about a little bit about big bucks. I cannot lie. You're right. You cannot (laughs) lie. We're talking big bucks tonight. We're getting towards the end of the season here in Michigan. Uh, the stories are starting to come out. Yeah, they are. They're. Uh, uh, which one are you showing next? Well, this is the other one out of Ohio, and I, I don't have a ton of information on this buck. This this buck actually was uh, talked about on the the forum that you and I belong oh, yeah. to, the Michigan Deer Hunter uh, Deer Hunters Let Them Go, Let Them Grow. Yep. Forum, and this uh, this buck is called the Yoder Buck out of Ohio. Right, and I tell you what, you want to talk about a flat. Looking flat, looking wide rack. Yeah, thirty-four inches inside uh, spread. Belmont County, Ohio. And the person who posted said he got it off the Deer Hunters page, Ohio Deer Hunters page. Um, and and the caption says uh, on this on our form that we belong to, it says, "Who doesn't believe the Ron po- Ron Pola buck is real now?" And that's where this whole thread started really going after this. Uh, after they posted this, was the fact they were comparing it to the Ron Pola buck. Because, I mean, you that's the first thing I thought of when I saw that, how wide it was. And actually, I think Denny Steiner had posted a picture of this on Facebook as well, if I'm not okay. mistaken. Denny, if you're still on, is this the same? I think this is the same buck that you posted here last week. So I tell you what, you want to talk about something that mirror image, especially the shot you're going to put up now of, of this buck now, where you can actually use it as a bow, bow holder, <laughs> right? You know, it, it, <laughs> it, it, you got the one drop tine over there on the, on the right hand side of the mm-hmm. deer, but the 34 inches inside spread. I'm telling you, this is. Uh, I would be amazed to watch this walk through the woods. Right. Uh, I'm trying to read that. I think that says 182 and seven eighths. Okay. My eyes fail me. I can't read keep read the screen here. But uh, Belmont County shot on the 9th of uh, November uh, this year in Belmont County, Ohio. But what what a what a tremendous buck! Ah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Could you imagine sitting there and having this walk into your field at one end and, and having to take that <laughs> sixty seventy yard walk just to get into bow range and in 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 
I, we don't know anything about the story, so we don't know how long this guy or had to watch this thing get to him before he could mm. shoot at it. But I tell you what, I'm just thinking about uh, a couple spots on my property or or your place there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got a couple hundred yard walk to get to, you and you're watching this thing, right. man. It, it's amazing. And well, looking at this buck, I mean, like Denny said, yes, that's the same picture they posted. I thought it was, uh, but but that buck when I first saw that uh, picture last week when Denny posted it, the first thing I thought of was Mitch. Absolutely. Mitch I mean, there, if anybody, uh, you just Google the story, and, the Rampolo buck, the Rampolo buck, and I tell you what, there. It, it's a, it's got folklore all behind it. it there is, it's behind it, in front of it, dragged through it. It was just <laughs> right? the poor guy. I'm sorry. It just he was for where he shot it. Nobody believes that there's deer that could live there. And right, but if you hear some other people's stories, it says, "Well, yeah, he knows what he's doing." So potentially he could be in a spot where there could be bucks like that. Well, on the forum that uh, that I, I grab these photos off of, that's what a, a lot of people were talking about. Um, and, and you had them on both sides of, of the talk, people that still don't believe it. And people who were vehemently saying, yes, it, it is a true story. They, they said, we know him well, you know, um, he was telling the truth. And one guy said he actually, I believe said he'd lay hands on the buck. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and Matt Howard's chiming in that, uh, Belmont County has a nuclear power plant in it. Oh, does it? <laughs> <laughs> that might explain it. It might explain a little bit. But but anyways, you're right. You know, it's it's like, you know, and when Mitch got that buck, it immediately went into something's wrong, something, you did something wrong. It, it yeah. was just, it was terrible. And here's a buck that, I mean, is almost a pure duplicate to me of kind of the way it looks. Right, right. Yeah. It's just that wide, that big, wide, flat. Wide and flat. And with the, the, the floppy years, you know, I mean, you can tell it's, it's an older buck. Exactly. So, so it, the buck definitely being an older buck, look at the face on that thing. You can tell it's been around a while. Right. And there's some spot in any state, you know, like the buck we talked about just in the previous segment where it was poached, they couldn't get a lot of photos of it. They couldn't you know, to track it, to, to get it to a core area. Mm-hmm. There's places in this state, there's a plenty of bucks that have the same thing go on. Oh, right, right. So whether you're in the lower or you're in the upper, that never see a human. Right. They, yeah. they, they're they born, they get big, they die. Right. You know, and it's just one of those things. But that buck is just... Incredible. I tell you what, the picture with the, the bow mm-hmm. on... Is, is amazing. That, that's pretty yeah. That's cool. that's a that's an epic picture for sure. But uh, I wish I wish I knew more about that deer, uh, the story behind it, and how how it all unfolded. I mean, those are the things that that's just so cool. Is when I mean, whether it's you know your first deer or whether it's you know the biggest deer you've ever shot or your kid's deer, the stories. You know, that's that's the part that it yeah, just is so intriguing and captivating. And when yeah. they're good stories, absolutely. And it, it, it's it's something to you. You see once in a while, and they're starting to come out now as we get through all the seasons, through all the different states, mm-hmm. these different types of bucks coming out. And it, it's one, one thing's kind of cool about the whitetail deer itself, and, and it, it's just how different racks can be. Right. How different does can be. It's just, right. you know, it's just not your, you know, you have your typical eight point, blah, blah, blah. but like this one's flat. One's just got mass. Right. You know, and we haven't gotten to the third story yet. No. You know, and so it's like, it's 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 a cool factor. Not two deer are really alike. No, not at all. You know, it just, I definitely would like to ch- try to shoot one. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. That. I'm not going to lie. It's a, yeah, sure, I'd take a whack at oh, it. And... <laughs> Matt Howard says, I'm not sure about the power plant, but it might. <laughs> Right. Hey, Rick Rangel, thanks for tuning into the show tonight, man. Glad you're on listening. But, uh, yeah, that, when I saw that deer the first time, that's exactly the first thing I thought of. Gosh, and that's Bola. been so long ago now. I That was what, in the 90s, 92, 93? I, that sounds about right. 89, 88, somewhere in there. So Google it real quick. I'm Googling. I'm a Googling. And just type in Rompola. That's all you need to do, and it'll pop up there. But, uh, you know, it, it's amazing that... Uh, you know, you just type in a name and a buck, it creates an image in your mind of, you know, of what you think about it, whether it be good or bad. I mean, everything, hole in the horn buck, the Hanson buck, you know, all, all of those bucks, just tremendous bucks that, that have folklore behind them. Uh, what does it say there? Does it got a date on it? I'm looking. Uh, Scroll on down there. I want to say it was in the 90s, somewhere in the 90s. November 13th. 1998. 98. Okay, so it's a little later. 
I would have thought that that was a lot lot earlier than it that. It sure seems like it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. But uh, 208, 2, 218 and 5 8. 218 and 5 8 and had an outside spread of 38. 38. So it was wider. Well, let's go back to. Let's that back one to. scored an inside of 34. Right. So if you look at this buck here, that was 34 inside, and that was what? 38? 38, 38 outside. Outside. So probably an extra inch or two. So if uh, if that was the case, and you did that with the same bow, yeah, it'd probably still fit in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Easy. But it's incredible. But it, it is. Doesn't it look... I mean, we're looking at it here on another computer. And, I mean, look at how much it looks like that. The ears. The, mm-hmm. Especially the ears in that picture mm-hmm. right there that everybody can see on Facebook. Right. Uh, the ears. It, it's it's that... It's an old buck. And But look at the tines on the Ron Pola buck. They're, they're, they're a lot taller than the ones yeah, that we're that's showing one, here. Yeah, that's one thing that Mitch has got uh, going for him in, in his buck there in 98. That his, uh, his tines are... I think the tallest one looks to be... Pff, at least about a foot, so <laughs> right, you know. So, and that was back before cell phones. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, you think about now with with the advent of, of a cell phone. I mean, I mean, here's you, you can pick up one of these things and you can start taking all kinds of photos. Not only that, we got truck cameras out there that will actually send photos to your phone, and you'll know exactly what's in front of your camera within minutes. Oh yeah, that's you know that's you the know, latest compared to back there in '98. I remember they had like. They were instamat like an instamatic camera inside of a box. But that was like the very first, and then people were starting to toy with that idea, of mm-hmm. thinking about it. And you're right. Now we're to the point where if you've got a cell service, pay five bucks a month, put a camera on a on a tree, and your your phone's lighting up, going, "Oh, I got something in front of my camera." So right. that's pretty cool, you know. And uh, amazing, amazing buck again from Ohio. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, we're uh, let's go ahead and take our next break. We come back, we'll we'll get on to the next buck that uh, that drew our eye this week. So we're gonna step outside, take a quick break, and we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. No, third segment of the third show. Third segment of the show. Third segment of the show. We've already covered two tremendous bucks. Right, exactly. We're just kind of kind of talking about things that have happened uh, this past hunting season that we're starting to get in the news now. And yeah. these two have come up, and one good and one bad. Yep. Yeah, but so. then another one came out of Wisconsin, right? Man, well, before we get to that, look at this other one down here that I'm oh, looking at. Jeez, old Pete's. I tell you what, you know, it just seems... I don't know if it's just because of the internet and the way news travels now, and the fact, just like we'd said, we got cell phones, we got trail cameras. Are we seeing bigger bucks now, or or are we becoming better land managers and, and well, habitat managers and deer managers overall? What do you think? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that doesn't tell I, me. Much. I think there's a. Uh, I think there's a certain percentage of people now starting to take the 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 deer by the. The horns, looking at the health. Antlers. Look, antlers, look, <laughs> looking at the health, looking at the, and starting to work on their, their land. Um, or actually starting to work, uh, starting to look into the public land sector too as well. Making, you know, getting out there and um, right. definitely have to do a little bit more cleanup on our public lands. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some garbage out there that needs to be taken care of, obviously. But um, I think with the internet, instead of waiting, three to six to eight months for the next magazine to come out where you read the story. Right. It's almost instantaneous. Within a day of they releasing the article, it it gets floated around and away it goes. Well, speaking of that, I mean, talking about magazines, um, you know, back when you took your hunt with, uh, with, uh, Greg Miller and and Pat Reeves and Pat. Pat, Yep. When that you entered in a magazine contest, right? Yep, and, got, I, and won that hunt. And won that hunt, and then that was. Was that I, how you got your information back then? Was the magazine, yeah, deer and deer hunting was. As a matter of fact, I think it's right over there. If you want to grab, right, exactly, and it just here, go go get it real quick. I, I, we got to show the people here real quick. All right, hold come on, come on. I'll, I'll entertain the folks on the podcast until you get back. So, but uh, you know, and now, like I said, we're talking about with the advent of technology and and the way we get our information and the way. Uh, we start managing our habitat and deer. Look at this, guys. I don't know if you can see them get the shine. There's a young Danny right there. 
on the cover of that magazine, Deer and Deer Hunter or Deer Hunting. But this is this is the contest you entered, and this is uh, the hunt that you won. That yeah, you exactly. So. And that article was, I think that says June. Does that say June? Uh, yep, June, 96. So that came out in June, and I took the hunt in October of the previous year. Right, so, yeah, eight months. Eight right? months. And now we're getting we're getting truck hand photos sent to our phones. Exactly. So, but uh, where were we going with this? I forget. Well, anyways, <laughs> so people are chiming in. Uh, Billy got, you were asking if anybody's going to go out hunting, right? Yep. So Billy's got a new longbow, and it would be a shame not to let it hunt this year. Uh, Jared Carpenter, who's up in Clara, said it would be nice to get some snow. It would be, so that means there's no snow in Clara. <laughs> right. Like middle of the uh, state. Kevin's going to be out back tomorrow and next weekend doing some hunting. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Denny's heading to Missouri for late season muzzleloader. Nice. Uh, Tim is doing both. Uh, oh, Ed DeWitt down, says Ohio smoke pool season. Nice. So, uh... And you're right, Tim. TV and social media has completely changed the hunting industry. Absolutely. Not going to lie about That's that. That's been a big topic here in the last couple of days, especially with all these bucks. That was something else I noticed was the fact that people, I, I don't know if it was a, more of a statement or a complaint about the way things have, you know, I mean, you, I, I call it horn porn, you know, where people are, you know, addicted to big antlers. I mean, everybody wants to shoot a big buck. Yeah, exactly. So, so um, I think he, somebody's knocking on my window here in the office. Yeah, it sure is. It sounds like it. Not sure. Uh, trying, somebody's trying to get in the cabin door. I don't know. In the cabin window. So, but it's like you know, it's just, it, and that's what it is. It's the age of almost instant gratification. Yeah, it is. You know, I, I know we see it now, right? You shoot a buck, tag it, take a picture, post it if right. you can. Right. You know, and and that's the way it is. And then it's it's happening all over. Um, so Jared Carpenter says deer season was crappy, and now he's going to focus on predators. There you go. You know, another way to manage your land. Yep, exactly. We talked about that last week, and uh, ooh, Charles Byram, he's even going to go out on his 29th wedding anniversary hunting. That's a man after my own heart. That, that's a that's a good wife right there, Charles. I, I, maybe she's going to go. Maybe she's a hunter as well. I, I don't know if uh, if his wife goes hunting with him or not. But that's maybe they, maybe that's the wedding gift that, that she's giving him is allowing him to go out. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> He's probably going to say, "Nobody allows me. I go on when I want." <laughs> right. So, oh, but it, it's I'm just, just messing with you, Charles. But the, it's the way it is, and, and look, we're getting from instant game, almost live game camera photos, right? To, or video, or video to shoot it, tag it, post it right. that quick. Where you had to wait, you had to wait till somebody came home. Took pictures of it or ran it to the street, to the corner, to the drugstore to get the camera developed. Developed. Yeah, get the film cartridge get, developed. Yep. And then here, here, look what I shot. Look what I shot. And you hope and pray that the pictures come out. Right, exactly. That, that What's this line through the middle of my photo? <laughs> wow. Right, right. So, uh, but getting on to the next story, this this one really, uh, this one really caught my eye this week. 51 point buck killed in Illinois. Uh, I don't know how close that is to you down there, uh, Denny. It's it's got to be somewhat close, I would think, closer to you than it is us anyway. But uh, this gentleman here shot this buck. Uh, it's called the Tucker buck. It's uh, not only the largest scoring hunter killed buck, but also as far as uh, the person who wrote this story can tell, uh, the buck with the most scalable points at forty seven. Forty seven. But the new uh, this or that was that was the record that this new buck, while not as big inches wise, but looks to sport fifty one scorable points. Uh, it was killed in Illinois, maybe a new world record for the most scorable points. Keith, I can't even pronounce that last name, uh, Sabaleski or something like that, from Johnson City, Illinois, killed a 51-point buck during the first week of the Illinois shotgun season. It's on private property uh, when the buck of a lifetime walked into his life. He says, I was just sitting there, and I heard the deer behind me. And after shooting uh, and killing what he thought was a big buck, he was even in for a bigger surprise. When he walked up to it and looked at it, he thought, what a blessing. No doubt. I mean, that's that's just incredible, um, right? And if you if you look at the disclaimer in this article, it even says that the person writing the article says he thinks it's a world record buck. He's was he was looking in some uh, non typical records, and, and the most he could come up with was uh, what did we got there? Forty seven. Yeah. And there was a, like a forty five, a yeah. thirty seven, and a thirty nine. So he's thinking, uh, after all said and done, that this but, might be. You know, it's talking about folk- folklore. Uh, I mean, he makes reference to other bucks here that we, a couple of which we just talked about. The hole in the horn buck uh, had forty five. The Missouri monarch had thirty seven. The beady buck had thirty nine. So 
I mean, those those bucks all ring a a bell with uh, with hunters for sure. Absolutely, you know. And and as that was, if I was be sitting there and I saw a buck like this come through, I, I'm not sure. It's just kind of kind of ugly. Uh, what? I, I think I might let that one go. Another foot. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you're nuts. <laughs> and there's the in the, you know the picture you're gonna put up next has got the even the you know even a picture with the game warden holding the buck. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, it, so you know who they called immediately upon right. shooting this deer. Right. You, you know, just to get everybody's story straight. Yep. Yeah. What's going on here? You well, know, look, I mean that's at night. Okay. And then this this picture is during the day. Yep. Exactly. Know? So and uh, and and this one here, this was probably this one was at night. And we, and if you notice, right there on the deer's left antler is the zip tie with the tag. Yep. So he probably got a hold. And yep, there's the white tag right there in that yeah. photo right there. And you know they they definitely did what they needed to do to get it right. And people come out and look at that. Obviously, conservation probably heard about it. And they were probably out there. Now, we don't know the time stamp of these photos, so we don't know if this is the, that afternoon well, or the next day or whatever. This had to be the next day because when he shot it, I mean, you look at you look at that. That's at night. That's obviously out in the field uh, after he shot it. And, and also probably here as well with the, the DNR official there. And as you can see in the photo, the tag is clearly showing. Yep. You know, for goodness sakes, guys, it's, it's law all across, all across this land. When you shoot a deer, before you do anything with it, tag it. You know, don't lose a buck of a lifetime because right you you get excited and you forget. I mean, and it's and easy to get excited over something like that. Denny Steiner says Johnson City is two hours south where he's at. Yeah, and uh, Denny Steiner throws a little bit out to Charles Byram uh, that he's not kidding anyone. He will be in at home in time to take his wife to dinner. <laughs> Good man, Charles. Oh, he's making the wife prime rib dinner. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Jerry Cartmer says he says. Uh, like those in Ohio, Illinois, and such, but also think poaching would take a rise. You know, um, unfortunately, you're probably right. You know, when you, uh, when you, know you start what? getting I think there, it's, it's already here. Uh, would it increase? Um, well, look at the gentleman that did it twofold. Mm-hmm. Shot one, was back out in the woods, and obviously I'm going to go on the assumption he might have been trying to put a doe down, yeah. but something bigger walked by, and he yeah. went and did it. Yeah. And look what happened. He still got caught. It happens even with celebs. We've, we've heard the stories. You know? Well, we've heard them. We've heard them from A to Z. We've heard them yeah. that the the person didn't have the right license. We've heard them, uh, you know, they didn't tag it properly. They had didn't. somebody else tag it. Yeah, so you know, all kinds of stuff. So. You know, uh, or or shooting it in the wrong state or wrong yep. county or whatever, yep. and they're yep. where they're supposed to be. And you know, it, it's just a shame what these big bucks will tend to do to people. They drive you insane. They do, and it's one of those things that. Uh, you know, you've seen the Milo Hansen buck out there, and you see these big bucks that uh, are out there. Um, yep. You see them all the time when we see them at, at Bass Po, or you see them at... Uh, the Hammer Buck. The Hammer Buck. 223 yeah. inches. That was 2015. Yep. Biggest biggest white tail take in North America. Right, exactly. Mark Hammer. Yep, right next to a highway. Yep. So, again, it goes back to what I talked about in the first segment about where these de- deer can be. They can be anywhere. Anywhere, yep. Anywhere, you know, and there, it just takes the one to to maybe live a little bit longer, have the good genetics, have the good food source. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Hammer shot his buck. It had a corn stalk in its, its antler, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like it's agricultural deer. So. But, you know, it, it's one of those things that, but I hope there's more good than bad. Me too. You know, I mean, I, I like hearing stories like this. I mean, this guy is just sitting out um, his private land, but still, I mean, it sounded like to me like he did not know that deer was around. Um, he was surprised. He turned on there, there. There it was. It wasn't like there was a story behind it. Like I've been watching it for weeks or for years or whatever, you know. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, it turns you out. See, and, you and know, there it is. I can tell you probably not because reading some of the statements in this article, after shooting and killing what he thought was just a big buck, mm-hmm. he was in for a bigger surprise. Right. So you know, it, you didn't. He didn't have ground shrinkage when he walked up on it. No. No. <laughs> And it, like I said, I don't think he he actually knew that deer was around. Uh, I, I, it almost sounds like it. Listening to this, uh, uh, what reading this article, and it's just one of those things that's cool. It is cool. You know, it's a nice, it's a pleasant surprise. So. Well, I tell you what, let's uh, take our last break. We come back. We'll uh, the last thing the show. We'll talk about a couple of little quick things, and we'll wrap it up. So we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. 
Now they've developed the vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? Find out at PSCArchery.com. Welcome back. Last segment before Christmas and all through the cabin. Yeah. Danny was stirring. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's the calm before the Christmas storm, man. Christmas dinner is tomorrow afternoon. Ready to rock it and have a little prime rib dinner and call it a day. Uh, do you guys celebrate, like, for your family, her family, do you have, like, two different gatherings, one on Christmas Eve and one on Christmas Day? We used to do, yes. Okay. We used to do her side Christmas Eve and then our side Christmas Day. But it, it's just kind of right now, It's we just do the two dinners. One is uh, we bring her mother over on Christmas Eve. And then Christmas Day now is just uh, kind of laid back, open some gifts, and uh, hang out. Hang out. That's cool. Make a little, uh, actually, we uh, get a little uh, breakfast, I don't know what you call them, a breakfast thing we throw in the oven. And mm-hmm. as that's cooking, we're opening gifts. And, okay, breakfast served. Uh, we have usually that's something we've kind of started doing uh, as the kids got a little older here at our house is having breakfast. Then they tear into them because I mean, uh, heck, my my old or my youngest now is seventeen. So. Right, exactly, and that's the thing. You know, it, it's it, not like it was when they were seven. And right, and you're starting to get into that where you're going to start having different families, and families are growing. You've mm-hmm. got two grandkids now, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, you wait, just wait a couple of years when all all of them are in full swing, and you've got twenty five kids here and twenty five people in your house. So that is just no. Oh yeah, it's going to happen. Not in a couple of years, it ain't. Well, <laughs> it better not. In a few years, <laughs> whatever the few might be, you'll see. Oh, hey, your brother's on Terry. Hey, Terry, type in real quick about the funniest Christmas story with Danny as a no, kid don't growing do up. Yeah, what is Let that? us all know. I'm going to get some scoop on you right now. Nah, I don't know if there is any. <laughs> so I remember. We're going to, I actually, I talked to my daughter. Uh, we're going to try something, hopefully, tomorrow night. If it all goes well, we're going to try to start a new tradition. All right, cool. We're going to have a bonfire in the backyard tomorrow night. Not tomorrow. I take it not tomorrow night. Christmas Eve or Christmas, Christmas Christ- night? Christmas night. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, just kind of hang out, uh, have a little campfire going. Not a bonfire, but a campfire. There yeah. You go. Why not? That way I can burn all the Christmas paper. I tell you what, the only thing you got to watch about that is is you got to watch where the, the ashes, embers go. go yeah, yeah. Because I did that. I don't know a few years back when we had probably a lot of the wrap gifts. Yeah. And I had you know I had white snow. Right. And it was just like black. All over the place. <laughs> yeah, all the, just like, okay, that worked out uh, well. So, uh, but yeah, no, it, it's going to be a good Christmas, I think. And we're just going to hang out and do the Christmas thing, have a little prime rib. Yeah. And uh, watch a Christmas story. Is that your best, is that your favorite Christmas movie? It's a good question. We, we kind of di- digressed here, folks. Well, yeah, because, you know, deer, but, it, it, it's, it's kind of the end of the... But the big the, guy's coming. He's got reindeer. Right. So we're still talking about deer. So, but, you know, it is what it is, and it's always good to be just with family. I was watching uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I've seen it twice now in the last week, and I, <sighs> I, just, I love that that movie. I got my Christmas moose mug. I'm happy. You know, the... Uh, oh, you, you got the, the eggnog mug? Yeah, nice. yeah, I got it. So... But yeah, it's uh, Christmas is here, folks. So hopefully uh, everybody gets some nice outdoor gifts for for Christmas from your family or friends or whoever. Denny thinks I tried to shoot my eye out. Probably hit, probably did. Did you get a BB gun for Christmas when no, you were a kid? No, I never did. I, I did. I think I got it for my birthday. And I got it taken away. Oh, way to go. It wasn't my fault. Sure. You, okay, we'll digress a little bit here more talking about this story. So my cousin and I, you know, this is when we used to go to Alabama for Christmas, down to my grandparents. And uh, on my mom's side of the family, we had Christmas on Christmas Eve at my great-grandparents' house. Okay. I was, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years old, somewhere around there. And my cousin and I both got Daisy Pump BB guns. Okay. And actually, I still got it. It doesn't work now, but I still have it. And I don't know if it was the day after Christmas or two days after. We were still down south when we went out behind his house down to the creek. And we're down there, you know, just shooting into the water in the creek, you know, just being kids. And we come back up to the house, and our parents are livid. One of the car windows got hit and broke with a BB. It was a, like a BB hole. Yeah, okay. But to this day, to this day, I still swear it was the neighbor kids down the road that he always had it out with. 
shot that window out. Oh, but you got blamed for it. We got blamed for it. We got our guns taken away. Well, our BB guns. Upon further investigation, now that you you know you're mm-hmm. older, mm-hmm. do you think it's possible that your BB guns could have done that? No, not where we were at. Okay, that's what no, because we were down. We were down a big embankment, down in a, in a creek bottom. Yeah, I mean, you know, thirty, forty feet down. Even if, even if it skips off the water, it isn't going to go. Yeah. Plus all these trees. Okay, and and okay, so the creeks in front of us this way. Like I'm pointing towards the camera here. You know, the creeks down here. The car is back up the hill and over and in the carport. You had your own version of the Kennedy BB. Exactly. The magical bullet. Yeah. Yeah, the magic beat. It bounced off the water, took a hard bounce off a tree, bounced over your head, back. Yeah. How far was the creek from the house? Oh, it was probably three, 400 yards. Oh, I'm sure with a BB and, and probably back <laughs> then with the... It the, was spring-loaded. It wasn't like a pump. I mean, it was a pump action, right. but it, it was a spring. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm sure the... Oh, yeah, I'm sure that probably was your BB. Yeah. But you, but you got blamed for it and it got taken away. Both of us got our, our BB guns taken away and I didn't get mine back until we came back to Michigan. <laughs> Dude, I was ticked. So yeah, that's that's my my Christmas story. Matt Howard says a second shooter. <laughs> <laughs> there was, there was, and it wasn't my cousin. Actually, it was a third shooter. It's yeah. funny though because back then, right? You're 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 yeah. young. You're a kid. You're like, what? What? Now that you're older, and you, you now you really know. It's like, yeah. There's no way. A there's chance no in way water I- that. It, Ever could have, a BB could have, no. A snowball's chance in Hades. Right. The, you know, the, it it could have, you know, there's you know, no way. Next time down there, dra- drag your dad down there and say, Dad, we're going to relive a moment, and you tell me how this worked. <laughs> he he actually still lives down there. All right. He, he moved back down to the family farm, so. Well, that's what I mean. Take him yeah. down there and says, I was shooting, and God knows how many years <laughs> later it is, but. Well, uh, about 46, 45. 46 years later, you can redeem yourself. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I'm still in trouble, though. But yeah, I couldn't use I couldn't use my BB gun for the rest of Christmas vacation, and that was probably the first day. Uh, well, I got it for Christmas. That would have been Christmas Eve. We got those because we always celebrated it on that side of the family on Christmas Eve, and it, it had to be like the day after Christmas because okay, Christmas Day we always spent <laughs> at my grandfather and grandmother Adam's house, and you didn't get it. No, the, I, I know it went in the trunk of the car, and and that was it. Yeah, I hear you. I, I was ticked. You. I'm still chapped about it. <laughs> I I don't blame you now that you know now you know about it. It's like yeah, what in yeah, absolutely yeah. So so that was my Christmas present going awry. So and now I have this story. When Buck Snort is old enough, I can sit him down and yeah, tell him how Grandpa was framed. That's at right, Christmas. Right. <laughs> that's why he doesn't like Christmas like normal people. That, that's right. That's why you're not getting a BB gun for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it happens. Oh, man. You're going to get a cup of coffee. (laughs) Yeah, right, right. So, um, but you know, other than that, um, I don't think we're going to have any ice per se around here anytime soon. So, we're not going to be doing that. Nope. Uh, Maybe in January we can get out and do some bunny hunting or something. I started looking at the the forecast here in our area for the next two weeks, and I think we got three or four days where it's going to be below freezing for more than 24 hours. I did catch wind. I think Erica made mention that they're thinking a polar vortex is coming in January. That's what I yeah I heard that in the news too. I'll believe it when I see it though. I don't I I don't put any stock into that until it actually hits. So we'll and see. Terry and my brother still has his BB gun and still uses it today. Okay. That's a single shot. That's a single shot. Okay. Single pump Daisy and I don't remember because mine's a Daisy 880. Okay. And his was a Daisy and I don't remember. It. I'll uh, I'll have to dig mine out and uh, and get it maybe next week. I'll bring it on on the show. We'll see the. Well, let's get the gun that committed the crime. Right now, if you pump that thing in and pull the trigger on it, the BB just kind of rolls out the end of the barrel. Oh, the springs. The oh, the springs. The springs wore out. Yeah, yeah. So, but see, what's the coolest gift you ever got for Christmas as a kid? Ooh, ooh. Mine was not the BB gun. <laughs> uh. Could have been my train, I guess. Okay. I got a bike when I was five. I remember my bike, though. I remember that. My red bike. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, the train was cool. It depends on what age you want to tell. What age are we talking right. about? Because as I got older, when I got a stereo, that was like. Right. That was like, <laughs> woo. Right. Well, I got, I, we, when we, we would always go down south, I was five years old. And I remember this little tiny box, about yay big, you know. Uh, and my parents, you know, handed presents out. And I opened that up. And it was a letter. And I'm like, 
you cheap, rotten, no good. <laughs> <laughs> but at the very end, it said, your, 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 Chris, your big Christmas gift's at home. We couldn't bring it down in the trunk of the car. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, obvious. yeah, and we got you a bike. So Okay. Yeah, all right. They're just... Cool. It, yeah. And I was like, I, I thought I got gypped. <laughs> See, now, what I <laughs> know now, cool. I would have put that into a, like a, get you a, a, a button shirt with a pocket. Mm-hmm. Put it inside. Put it in and let, let you open up clothes. Right, right. right. So... No, man, Christmas is good. You know, it's a good time of the year. It's, you know, it good is. to be thankful for everything. It's and... not going to be a white Christmas. So, well, according to the weather guy, how technical how technical you want to get about a white Christmas. He says there could be snow flurries. So you want to call that a white Christmas? Go for it. Right. So, but uh, yeah, nope. Big man is due tomorrow. And even though the government shut down, Norad is still up and running. That's a good thing. That's right. Because I'm going to be waiting for that guy. Well, you you got I so say you got the roof cleared off, but yeah, the roof's cleared off. We have no snow. So, ooh, look at that, Denny Steiner, a York fiberglass bow. Oh, nice. Still has it. You know, I wish I still had my my bow from when I was my first bow that I had, um, a bear whitetail too. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it had actual cables. Oh, yeah. <laughs> had the cables go to the pulleys. Yeah, my brother had a bear yeah. whitetail. You know, I think right everybody there? that yeah. bow hunts had a bear whitetail. <laughs> You know? There wasn't many bows out on yeah. the market. You know, them and Daisy uh, BB guns. That's the two things that I think every every boy had at Which some point. we can talk about next week on the next week's show. But oh, we're running up on time. Yeah, yeah. that's a perfect uh, segue into next week. We'll do a segment on that about the uh, article that came out, well, the announcement that came out uh, from Parker. Yeah, that's about right. About ceasing operations and, yep. and the saturation of the market. And like you said, back in the 80s. Mm-hmm. There wasn't money to choose from. Right. Uh, before we go tonight, though, I do want to, uh, Danny and I, we, we alluded to at the very beginning of the show that uh, we actually, Thursday, we went over to uh, a shop over here in Oxford, Michigan, Beyond the Ears, a f- good friend of ours works over there. And Dan Yass from PSC was actually up in Michigan. We yes, went over to see was. him over there. But uh, they had a big event going on over there. They had a like really good event. Actually, I didn't know this, but uh, Chris said there was over 200 people there. Yeah, I saw I saw his pictures. But uh, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers had like a meet and greet there. And Lan Tawney, uh, who I believe is the founder of that group. He's the right? vice president. Vice think, president? Yeah. Okay. He was over uh, from, I think he lives out west. Yes. From the story he give, I take yeah. it. But, uh, yeah, a lot of good guys over there. Got to see Brian Anderson from G5. And Brian Anderson was there. Rob was there. Uh, Got to see Rocky. I haven't seen him in a while. Rocky was there. Adam Kemmer. Yeah, Adam Kemmer is there. Yeah. Uh, more to come with him. Yeah. Um, but it was a good night. And it was only on a Thursday night for a couple hours, which was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. How's that drive home? The drive home stunk. Yes, it did. I want You want to talk about fog. Well, the way I came back home was right through the state game area. You know, around them borders of all them roads, and they, there's deer all over the place. And I was just wait. I literally couldn't see more than twenty feet in front of my headlights. Yeah, that's about it. And my fog lights. And I don't know. You must. I think you got out before I did. I stopped and got something to eat on the way home. Then I came back through. You oh, know? okay, that's yeah. what you did. So I got. A, actually, I was ahead of you then. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, I was like, wow. I mean, this was. It was some serious fog. It was some serious fog that I was like, and like you said. <laughs> I'm watching that white line, and I'm like, please don't be there standing in front of me because yeah. I don't have much stopping time. Right, twenty yards. I was, I really thought that uh, you know, on the way home, uh, there was going to be a good chance of, of seeing a deer or hitting a deer the way it was, but it, it was, it was really foggy. So, Jared Carpenter got an old bear Alaskan. Nice. And Terry says, does it have a hole for oil in your BB gun? We'll have to check. Yes, it does, and it's been oiled. Okay. Yeah, but it hasn't been oiled in quite a while, so I don't know. Maybe that's the problem. You know, we could probably set up a range right here and. You gonna shoot my car window out? No, we'll shoot into the the closet over there. Yeah, right. So, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk a little more about that. Definitely next week. talk about that next week because I think there's a uh, uh, to me personally that you, they're kind of hitting nail on the head. Kind of scared what they just went and did and said. Oop, that's it. Yep, no more. So, yep. And and we're talking about archery. We're gonna be at ATA uh, coming up in about two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks. ATA. We'll be down in Louisville, Kentucky. So yes, we'll we be will. bringing reports from louisville on the new gear that we see and people we get to talk to so we're looking forward to that yep. gonna, gonna see the guys from uh hunter's blend down there hunter's blend we'll see the guys from pse there absolutely so uh, we'll see the guy we'll see stan um stanislavski eric springer thank you i wasn't <laughs> gonna say the other one from stan's I... releases thank you yep and copper john so we'll go down we'll go see them looking forward to seeing some people that uh we only get to see some of them once a year. Once a year, really. Yeah. It's, 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 that's about it, you know. And unfortunately, Dan, 
we do most of our work with up here lives close enough that we see them multiple times a year. Yep, absolutely. So, so well, I'll tell you what, that's going to do it for us on the podcast uh, this week, folks. Uh, stay tuned next week. We'll see you next week with the last show of the year. Absolutely. Until then, have a good Merry Christmas. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Carbon Express, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Scent Hunting Scent, Killer Food Plots, Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants, Cabela's, Spot Shooters, Limb Walker Game Calls, Twisted Minds Bowstrings, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Antler Action, and Family Traditions Tree Stands. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.